All right, guys, here's the second part of today's lesson is doing rotations in three dimensions. We're going to take shapes and spin them in three dimensions to make a 3D figure. Um, so we're going to watch a video here for just a second that kind of shows these figure. visualizations. Well, let's watch what happens as it rotates. Oops, sorry. So I can't make it bigger. Sorry about that. It's interesting to see that the edge that was perpendicular to the axis drew a flat... Oh, we kind of missed it. Sorry. So well, we're taking this triangle. What as it rotates. We're spinning it around the y-axis. It's interesting it's, to see... It's filling everything in. the edge in. that was perpendicular to the axis drew a flat surface as it rotated. And the other two edges, as they... So it ends up making this cone here. Let's take a look at another one. So we got this... Oh, sorry. Oh, really? Five seconds? Okay. So we have this situation. We got a triangle. We're rotating it around the y-axis. Can you picture what that would look like? You might because I just showed you an accident. But it's going to be spinning in 3D around that y-axis. Pay attention to what it does. You're going to have to be able to picture this stuff in your head a little bit. Looking pretty like a flying saucer kind of. It'd be two cones. You'd have to get the lateral of the two cones to get the to get the surface area. Okay, and then we got man, it just doesn't. Okay, there we go. So we got a rectangle here, spinning it around the y-axis. That would make a cylinder, guys. If we're spinning in circular motions, we're going to be talking about cylinders and cones. We got another one coming up. I just want you to take a look at it. What's going to happen with this rectangle? Can you picture it? Think about it. It's spinning around the y-axis. It's going to be a bigger cylinder than the last one, but it's still a cylinder. So we're going to be doing some rotations like this. And if we jump ahead on that shape, we don't care too much. That's supposed to be a circle. The guy can't really make a circle. Yikes. Spinning around the y-axis. Sorry, Learnzillion. You're awesome. And you make yourself a sphere. So understanding what a, what a rotation is. So we have an axis of rotation. We're spinning around the axis. All right, so what do we have here? We're rotating it about the side AB. So here's the side AB. You have to be able to picture what's going on. Um, we're going to, this is what we do. We draw the reflection of the shape. So our, it would be over here, and we connect the vertices with a circular motion. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's what's going on. So if you want to know what it would look like, you draw the reflection, and you connect the vertices with a circular motion. And there was one of these in the video, but it's basically two cones. We have this shape, and then the exact same shape below it. So that's what kind of happened here. Now, our triangle that we started with was isosceles. This red line right here, what does that represent? Well, if you're spinning left and right, which our circle was going left and right, then your radius is going to be horizontal. That's the radius of this cone. That's this number right here. And we don't know that radius right now. This number would be the height of our cone. And because the original triangle was isosceles, it's going to be half the entire side, right? If you just take an isosceles triangle, and it's 10 and 10, and this side's 8, when you draw this line, it's going to make it 4 and 4. That's the rules of an isosceles triangle. So we need to know, oh, where's the 10 go? So the 10 is this slanted piece. Well, when you spin it, that is the slant height. So we need to get the surface area of the resulting solid. Well, look at the original shape. Could you, If you were holding this in your hand and you had to paint it, could you see or touch the actual circle? The answer is no. You could only see and touch the lateral part. So it's going to be the lateral of a, of a uh, cone, which is pi r l. But there's two of them, so we have to double that answer. The radius, we don't know. The slant height they gave us, right? This is the slant height. It's 10. We're going to have to get the radius. We're going to do a quick pythag. So I'm going to draw this right triangle off to the side. Remember, we reduce the numbers. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 
So that would be 25 and 4. Do we add or subtract? We subtract, right? Hypotenuse minus leg. We can't add. If we add, we'd get a bigger number. We want a smaller number. So that is root 21. But we divided by 2, so we multiply the 2 back in. It's going to be 2 root 21. So the radius is 2 root 21. So the lateral area would be pi times the radius times the slant height. And then there are two of them, right? There's a top cone and a bottom cone. We have two laterals that we have to worry about. 2 times 2 times 10 would be 40. There's a pi and there's a root 21. And that would be our answer. Okay, let's do another one here. We have y equals 0. Hoi vux, y equals is going to be horizontal. x vux, <coughs> vertical. Negative 4 thirds, x plus 8. Down 4 over 3. Down 4 over 3. So what we're doing is working with this triangle. I'm going to delete the excess because it can get kind of confusing when we start spinning it. So we're, we're going to take this triangle and spin it around the y, uh, the x-axis. So to do that, I draw the reflection on the other side of the x-axis. And I connect the vertices with a circular motion. Now you'll notice that this cone is not upright. So be very careful. If I spin vertically like I did here, then I have to know that the circle is vertical. So the radius is 8. The height, which we don't need, is 6. And the slant height, which we do need, well, that would be a right triangle. It's going to clock in at 10. That's a real common triple, 6, 8, 10. It's based off of a 3, 4, 5, but we know that one. You can do Pythagorean theorem if you need to. So we, if we were holding this in our hand, we could see the entire cone. Well, the surface area of an entire cone is pi RL plus pi R squared. It's the lateral plus the base. The base just being a circle. Well, we know all those numbers. Pi, the radius is 8. The slant height is 10, pi RL, plus pi times a radius of 8 squared. 80 plus 64 is 144 pi. Okay? That's a fun one. Let's look at the next one. Y equals 3 halves X. Actually, hit pause and try to do this one on your own. See if you understand what's going on here at all. All right, we have y equals 3 halves x. That's up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2. That's going to keep going and going and going. We have hoi vux, x equals 6. That's vux at 6, vertical. y equals 0. That's hoi, horizontal. And we just want the actual triangle. So I'm going to redraw this line and stop there. That's the space, and we're going across the x-axis once again. So that's right 6 up 9. I'm going to go right 6 down 9. We're going to reflect across the x-axis, and we're going to connect opposite vertices with a circular motion. Kind of hard to see, but it's again, it's a cone that is not upright. So the radius is going to be the vertical line, right? If the circle is spinning vertically, the radius is going to be vertical. That's 9. So we know that the radius is 9. The height is from 0 to 6, 6. And the slant height we need to find. So I'm going to draw a smaller version of that triangle. Divide by 3. 9 divided by 3. 6 divided by 3. This would be 4 plus 9, which is root 13. But we have to multiply the 3 back in. That's 3 root 13. So the slant height is 3 root 13. And it's just a full cone, so it's just a cone. The surface area of a cone is pi r l plus pi r squared. That is pi times the radius times the slant height. 
plus pi r squared pi times the radius squared. That's going to be 27 pi root 13, and that's going to be 81 pi. There's nothing else we can do. Those are unlike terms. One of those is pi, and one of those is pi root 13. Don't, do not try to combine those. You can't do it. They are unlike terms. All right, moving on. It's going to get a lot harder. If you read these two questions closely, they're, they're identical with one exception. One letter, really, is now its y-axis instead of x-axis. So it's still going to hit 6, 9. It's going to be the same spot over here. It's the same starting triangle. But this is going to be more difficult for sure. So we still have 6 and 9. We're going to draw the reflection over here. It's going to go left 6 up 9. All right, and we're going to connect the opposite vertices with a spinning motion. Can you picture this at all? What's it going to look like? So we're connecting the vertices with a spinning mo Oh, I'm going to try again. I can do better. I can do better. I can do better. Oh, yeah, that's good. Now, a lot of these lines would not be solid because they're inside the shape. So I'm going to delete all those. But you would have like this dotted line going down here. And here's the thing, guys. This, this cone shape here, it is a hole. It's a gap. It's not actually there, right? If you poured water here, like we spun that original triangle, there's empty space there. We have a cylinder with a cone removed. If this was volume, it'd be so much easier to think about. It would just be cylinder minus cone. You cannot do that for surface area. You have to imagine all the surfaces you can see and touch as if you were painting this object. So if I said, hey, I need you to paint my object, and I handed you this, what would you have to paint? You would have to paint the bottom, which is a circle. That would be pi r squared on the bottom. You would have to, to paint the outside part of the cylinder. That's the lateral of the cylinder. So this is the base. You'd have to paint the lateral of the cylinder, which is 2 pi r h. And then what else would you have to paint? Well, there's no top base, so we're not painting the top. But like if you were having to paint the inside, what shape would the inside be? It would be the lateral of the cone. That's another surface you could see and touch here. Well, that is pi r l. So those are the numbers we need. Well, we know, well, let's, let's actually, let's go see what we know. We know that the radius here, I said it earlier, the radius is 6. We know that the height is 9. We did this on the last problem. We know that the slant height is 3 root 13. So we have a radius of 6, a height of 9, and a slant height of 3 root 13. So it's going to be pi times 6 squared plus 2 pi times 6 times 9 plus pi times 6 times 3 root 13. Pi times 6, yeah. So those are the pieces. This would be 36 pi. This would be 104 pi. No, it wouldn't. 54 times 2 would be 108 pi. And then this is going to be 18. There's a pi and a root 13. Combine like terms, I get 144 pi plus 18 pi root 13. There we go. That's a tough one. I think the next one's probably tougher. You're welcome to pause it and try to do it. Um, let's see what we got. We have hoi vux, vux vertical for x at 2 and 6. We have horizontal hoi at 8. And 3. The enclosed region, I'm going to trace it. Oh. 
We just care about this rectangle. So I'm going to erase, ah, I'm going to erase the excess. That's what we care about. And we're going across the y-axis. Can you picture this? Can you imagine what this is at all? Um, oh, I moved it a little bit on accident. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to reflect it across the y-axis. And I'm going to connect opposite vertices with a circular motion. So we go circular. We go circular. This would be on the inside. Circular. And more circles. I'm going to erase these solid lines that you really wouldn't be able to see. Throw some dotted lines back in. And it would look like this. So it's like a tube. It's like a roll of toilet paper, however you want to explain it. So here's the thing. It's surface area. So we have to figure out a way to get these surfaces. What are the surfaces? We have a top and a bottom that are circles with holes cut out. We have a big outside lateral, big outside lateral, and a small inside lateral. If you're holding this in your hand, everything you could paint has to be accounted for. We could paint the tops except for those circles. They're not there. We could paint the outside and we could paint the inside. Those are the things we can paint. So what are these? What is this? Well, that's the total of the big cylinder minus two small circles. And this is the lateral of the small cylinder. And we need to add that on. So it's the big cylinder minus the two circles that aren't there. That would take care of all that. And then it's the lateral of the inside. We can touch and see the inside. So we got to add that in. So we need some numbers. Little r is 2. Big r is all the way out there to 6. So big r is 6. Little r is 2. The height is a little tricky. It starts at 3 and goes to 8. The height is 5. All right. So we're going to do the total of the big cylinder, which is 2 pi rh plus 2 pi r squared. That says if nothing's gone. Minus the two small circles. Oh, let me rephrase this. 2 pi big r, big radius, plus 2 pi big radius squared minus 2 pi times little r squared. we got to subtract the two small circles. Add on 2 pi little rh, the little lateral. So that is 2 pi times 6 times 5 plus 2 pi times 6 squared minus 2 pi times 2 squared plus 2 pi times 2 times 5. That would be 60 pi plus 72 pi minus 8 pi plus 20 pi. Those are all pi. We can combine all these. Um, what's a good way to split this? This is what I've been doing in class. This would be 12 pi. These together would be 72 pi. And then those together would be 144 pi. There we go. All right, guys, those are some fun questions. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.